We going all the way live with it With live talk, increase your mentality Put away carnality and increase your spirituality Let's go! Live talk Are you ready? This live talk Are you ready? Live talk Are you ready? Yes sir Are you ready? Live talk for the word of the day, uh, the knowledge and the wisdom will increase your faith. Are you ready for live talk? Because it's about time to set it off. Yes, it is about time to set it off. Welcome to Live Talk. I am your host, Arthur Jeremiah, alongside my co-host, the minister, Samuel. Welcome back to Live Talk, and it's live. <laughs> yes, it is, indeed. All right, brother. You know, I, I normally miss this, and we always have to catch this. And so let's let's do our general statement. From the beginning. There we go. <laughs> In the beginning. So Live Talk is brought to you by TBS Goodwill and Builders of the Highway Foundation. We ask that you verify or contact your personal or business consultant about any information that is shared on this show. Laws are different from state to state, and state laws and local laws change often. Do not lean solely on the information that you hear on this show. However, there are professionals on this show that you can consult with, but through the right channels. By any means, you can always DM us <clears throat> on Facebook or Instagram, or you can email us at livetalkorl at gmail.com if you have any um, concerns about anything that you hear from our show. All right, brother, we got that out of the way. Today is a special program that we have set up. Not like our normal programs, we uh, we normally will open up with a word of today, and then we'll normally go into a commercial break, and then we'll come back with the main topic, and then we would normally get into some some news around the country, and then we would begin to close out. But today is a special day. We want to recognize um, a part of history that was closed off for so long, and we just want to you know give that you know that time to that history. So the main topic that we have today that we'll be talking about is Juneteenth and what being free of freedom means to us. <clears throat> so that's what we'll be talking about today on this show because, uh, you know, we, we're actually on vacation. We're really not here. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we're enjoying our freedoms today. Yes. <laughs> the little freedoms that they give us. <laughs> we, we're we're going to legally take it off. Right. <laughs> But we do appreciate you tuning in to the show. Um, like always, we have the show the first and the third of each month. And this is the third of the month. So we want to make sure that we have something that we put out today. All right. So, so let's take a quick look at this video and we're going to come back and talk about it. One day, while hiding in the kitchen, Charlotte Brooks overheard a life-changing secret. At the age of 17, she'd been separated from her family and taken to William Neeland's Texas plantation. There, she was made to do housework at the violent whims of her enslavers. On that fateful day, she learned that slavery had recently been abolished, but Neeland conspired to keep this a secret from those he enslaved. Hearing this, Brooks stepped out of her hiding spot, proclaimed her freedom, spread the news throughout the plantation, and ran. That night, she returned for her daughter, Tempe. And before Neelan's spiteful bullets could find them, they were gone for good. For more than two centuries, slavery defined what would become the United States. From its past as the 13 British colonies to its growth as an independent country. Slavery fueled its cotton industry and made it a leading economic power. 10 of the first 12 presidents enslaved people and when U.S. chattel slavery finally ended, it was a long and uneven process. Enslaved people resisted from the beginning by escaping, breaking tools, staging rebellions, and more. During the American Revolution, Vermont and Massachusetts abolished slavery, while several states took steps towards gradual abolition. In 1808, federal law banned the import of enslaved African people, but it allowed the slave trade to continue domestically. Approximately 4 million people were enslaved in the U.S. when Abraham Lincoln was elected president in 1860. Lincoln opposed slavery, and though he had no plans to outlaw it, his election caused panic in southern states, which began withdrawing from the Union. They vowed to uphold slavery and formed the Confederacy, triggering the start of the American Civil War. 
A year into the conflict, Lincoln abolished slavery in Washington, D.C., legally freeing more than 3,000 people. And five months later, he announced the Emancipation Proclamation. It promised freedom to the 3.5 million people enslaved in Confederate states, but it would only be fulfilled if the rebelling states didn't rejoin the Union by January 1st, 1863. And it bore no mention of the roughly 500,000 people in bondage in the border states of Delaware, Maryland, Kentucky, and Missouri that hadn't seceded. When the Confederacy refused to surrender, Union soldiers began announcing emancipation, but many Southern areas remained under Confederate control, making it impossible to actually implement abolition throughout the South. The war raged on for two more years, and on January 31st, 1865, Congress passed the 13th Amendment. It promised to end slavery throughout the U.S., except as punishment for a crime. But to go into effect, 27 states would have to ratify it first. Meanwhile, the Civil War virtually ended with the surrender of Confederate General Robert E. Lee on April 9, 1865. But although slavery was technically illegal in all Southern states, it still persisted in the last bastions of the Confederacy. There, enslavers like Neeling continued to evade abolition until forced. This was also the case when Union General Gordon Granger marched his troops into Galveston, Texas on June 19th and announced that all enslaved people there were officially free and had been for more than two years. Still, at this point, people remained legally enslaved in the border states. It wasn't until more than five months later, on December 6th, 1865, that the 13th Amendment was finally ratified. This formally ended chattel slavery in the U.S. Because official emancipation was a staggered process, people in different places commemorated it on different dates. Those in Galveston, Texas, began celebrating Juneteenth, a combination of June and 19th, on the very first anniversary of General Granger's announcement. Over time, smaller Juneteenth gatherings gave way to large parades, and the tradition eventually became the most widespread of emancipation celebrations. But while chattel slavery had officially ended, racial inequality, oppression, and terror had not. Celebrating emancipation was itself an act of continued resistance, and it wasn't until 2021 that Juneteenth became a federal holiday. Today, Juneteenth holds profound significance as a celebration of the demise of slavery, the righteous pursuit of true freedom for all, and a continued pledge to remember the past and dream the future. Brother, the Emancipation Proclamation signed into law January 1st, 1863 by then President Abraham, Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln, right? Mm -hmm. So what is the Emancipation Proclamation and what was happening during this time in history that led to this emancipation? <laughs> and see, that's, that's a good topic to start, good point rather to start mm -hmm. on our topic uh, because Juneteenth actually is, is fortunate now that it is a federal holiday. Personally, I don't think it's talked about as much as it should be. Right. Um, especially um, in our communities or the nation as a whole. It's like it's something we really should embrace. It's good they didn't make a federal holiday out of it. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we, we have to turn the clock back to think about, you know, what was going on. Um, and the country was in the midst of a civil war. Right. That's what was going on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for even though America had its freedom, like it had Independence Day, but see that, that freedom didn't carry it through for everyone. Right. And we as a people were still in slavery during um, the Civil War. And, you know, it's, you know, you can get people to talk about, well, why was it signed? Was it to free the slaves or was it to save the Union? Um, personally, a lot of us believe, of course, it was meant to keep the nation because it was fracturing mm. and it was done to keep the nation together. Slavery came as a part of it. Mm -hmm. I don't think that was the only, that was not their main objective. Right. Slaves were not the main objective. The main objective is they were at war. Right. And, and yeah, the South against the North. Mm -hmm. 
and you had more, of course, more servitude of slaves in the, in the South. And when you're thinking about winning something, you're not thinking about uh, the people or, you know, whatever may uh, transpire and, uh, you know, becomes like the, the effect of whatever choice you made. Because in your head, your choice is we need to end this war. We need to win. by Yeah, and win this war mm -hmm. by any means necessary. Even as that calls for us to free these yeah. slaves. Yeah. <laughs> If this is what's going to cause us to win this war, we're about to free these slaves. That, that's what it's going to take. <laughs> if that's what it's going to take, that's what we're going to do. Right. So I think it was more about that. And, and as we, you know, uh, being around for so long, we, we have heard different sides. But I'm thinking to myself, if, if I'm Abraham Lincoln and I'm in charge of the union and bringing back the unity of the country, I have to make the decision that's going to actually do what I'm trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And if it calls for some slaves to be free, by all means, I may not have meant that to happen. Yep. It, but that was a result of me doing what I felt like needed to be done at this time. It, it wasn't popular. It wasn't the first choice. But the other side of the coin was, well, we can infuse some new blood into our troops mm -hmm. because now we can get a winning force on our side. But when we bring them as a winning force on our side, uh, we're going to have to go ahead and give them their freedom. Right. Right. And, and the thing about it is, and we, we're just going to go through it. Like a, a proclamation is a actual former notice, a uh, written notice that was given um, to each state. Each state is supposed to have had this proclamation. Um, that the slaves was emancipated, which emancipation means to, to set free. Um, of course, and this is a slave released from bondage, servitude, or <clears throat> serfdom to free from restraint or control as of social convention. Law to release, and it also goes into talking about the laws to uh, release of uh, parental control over uh, supervisor of a child. But we're talking about the servitude that we was in as a people. And at this time, the Emancipation Proclamation was implemented and signed into law by Abraham Lincoln uh, to free the slaves. But brother, everybody didn't get the memo. No. See, a lot of, <laughs> see there were some people that had a moral <laughs> conscious and said, well, you know, slavery is wrong. We've been doing this for 200 years. So we really shouldn't be doing it. Mm -hmm even though we're still doing it. Right. Um, <laughs> and if these other folk win, first of all, we're going to be kicked out mm -hmm. and they go overthrow. So let's go ahead and, and, and do it and we'll make it official. But like you say, a lot of people didn't get the memo. Mm -hmm. A lot of States, um, wanted to consider, continue doing their own thing. Right. Because they feel like they had, some slaves that were ignorant because I mean, think about it. We, we were, uh, when you don't know a whole lot, I mean, you can even, we're going to get into the, the modern day of how, how things are opposed to then. And we still suffer from that today when it comes to knowing the law, understanding when the laws are being, uh, you know, written into, uh, effect, you know, uh, we still wonder about doing certain things. Don't know that, it's against the law, mm -hmm. um, but the ignorance of a law doesn't protect you, protect you from anything. Uh, so we're ignorant to it. <clears throat> but even at this time, you know, we was more ignorant to it than ever because, uh, you know, we never figured, you know, that we was ever going to be freed as a people. Right. And for this to happen, you know, of course, mentally, it's a win, but physically, it's a challenge. Because mm. most slaves couldn't read at the time. Right. So it's like you could give them the Emancipation Proclamation. It was just a piece of paper <laughs> because they couldn't read it. They had to rely on someone who could read to interpret it or someone to explain it. Or it was unfortunate that someone else had to come in and enforce it. Right, right. So <clears throat> two years later now, this is after the Emancipation Proclamation. A union leader announced to about 250,000 um, slaves that they were free due to a law signed by President Lincoln. 
This date was June the nineteenth, June nineteenth, eighteen sixty five. Sixty five. So that's where Juneteenth come into place. Um, we, we say Juneteenth. Some people say, oh, it's June the 10th. No, it was June the 19th. June the 19th. So we just said June the 10th. That's what it was called. Um, but at this time, you telling these slaves that they're free, right? What happens as a result of us being free? And I'm doing, well, you can see me doing my air quotes. <laughs> and think about it. That, that was two years. Right. That wasn't June of the year that it was signed. That was two years after. Right. That means things were business as usual in certain places. Right. For And when I say business as usual, that means you're still a slave. Yeah. If you don't know, we ain't going to tell you. Right. <laughs> and it, it would take one of them to come down here and tell you because we're in the South. Yep. And the, the travel, like, this is probably... That's why it took them two years to get there. <laughs> and they just didn't tell them. It's like, it well, you just couldn't tell them. They had to bring armed troops right. to enforce it. Right, right. Now, a beautiful part of that was you did have black men who had become a part of the Union Army. Mm -hmm. Now they could go in in uniform and they had the power of the military and might behind them to enforce right. freedom upon their own people. But it took two years. Right. Uh, that's a long time. No, it is. That's a very long time. It's still being served to, uh, to a people that know you, you should be free. Yes. You know, they're just taking advantage of it at that particular time. Now, understanding. And it's called, if you don't force me, I'm not doing it. Right. It right. took the military to force it. Right. It Because the word had already come down. Mm -hmm. And they were saying, what you, uh, you going to do? Right. Okay, you know what we going to do? We go send the military down there since y'all ain't listening. Mm -hmm. It took two years, but they finally did it. Right. <laughs> but it, it's 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 a little. You know, let me get my camera back right here. <clears throat> it's kind of, you know, when you think about it, because we we didn't have you know you didn't have telephones then. No. You know, so no cell phones. Like, <laughs> you didn't have no cell phones. No internet. <laughs> and <laughs> to to get a a, a message through. Um, to someone, you know, it was a little challenging. You know, like if you had mm -hmm. to even send mail out and then they choose and pick, you know, you got the, the yeah. mail system set up, they rigged up, you know, they, they see what going out and what's, you know. There's not so, a delivery. Yeah, right. They're just, you know, it got lost in the mail, you know, at the end of the day. Um, so that information is just not being conveyed to the people that needs to get that information. And coming from the North, Trying to go to the, trying to get to the south. We already know. Sometimes you know driving can take a little while. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and if they had to jump on horses Horseback. or whatever and walking and walking, it's gonna take a little. It's gonna take more yeah. than just a while <laughs> to get there. <laughs> to get that amount of people there to enforce it. Right. To get that amount of people there to enforce it. Because you send ten, mm -hmm. you send five or ten. Uh, they came back dead. Right. 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 So you need to send a, enough people. And then the people had to be ready to go. Then they may have to prepare, prepare food mm -hmm. for their journey. Um, so it's a lot of resources that had to go into um, effect and be accounted for as well. Now, so when when we think about, okay, this has been conveyed to the, you know, the slaves, right? They're free at this particular time. What's on their mind? Because we, when we think about what we know is we, we, we knew that we was unlearned. And without, without a job, we work, you know what I'm saying? We weren't really making any money, although the, the slave master will feed us and give us, you know, mm -hmm. a little something here and there. We knew we didn't have any land or housing, like I said, food. Um, and we knew we didn't have any security, a safe haven, you know, to just protect us from the, the wind or the rain and none of this here. So when you're saying, I'm free... And you release me from whom I have already always depended on, and I can just go out and I'm free. Free, to, free to do what? Right. Where's my freedom? Where's my freedom? Because if if I'm gonna become free, then I should be free to get some water. Mm -hmm. I should be free to get some food. I should have some free housing. Yep. <laughs> so it's a lot that comes along 
with freedom when you say that. But for these people, at this particular time, it was more of a, how should I put it, more of a burden to be free than to be in captivity. On, on a lot of them, it was. Now, see, you did have some who, when they found out they were free, they knew, I'm out. They, they fled because they heard you could go to the north mm -hmm. and it wasn't as bad. You could have some freedom. But imagine if you had a, a wife and children. You have no transportation. Mm -hmm. You just got to break out and walk or you got to run. Some did it. Mm -hmm. But then what a lot of the soldiers, what they were telling them is that you're free. So that means now you can go demand a wage from your former slave master. Now, see, look at that. Now that can, now that can go both ways. Right. Because, see, you got some slave masters who are going to have you working for almost nothing. Right. <laughs> or threaten to say, I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to pay you, but I'm going to still treat you like, like a slave. slave. Because if you stand in my property, you own my land, mm -hmm. by the time they figure the math, you if if you weren't shrewd, you know those it, you were slavery for a slavery still existed for a long time. Right, right. Even outside of that, because a lot a lot of slaves went back to their their master. Because they didn't have no what, what were right. they gonna do? Mm -hmm. For example, you in Texas. <laughs> how you gonna get to Chicago? <laughs> you don't have a military, you don't have right. a horse, you don't have food. Right. And then you out there in no man's land, um, they're still hanging you. You got a clan. Yeah, you still got the clan. So You got slave catchers. Right. Who used to do it for a bounty, now will be doing it just out of spite that you kill free slaves. Right. No, hey, you catch a free slave and kill him or, or try to bring him back into slavery privately. Mm -hmm. Who's going to enforce it? If you're in a small town and that sheriff is for slavery, who's going to enforce it? It's called keep your mouth closed mm -hmm. and do what we tell you or we're going to kill you. Right. So now this this leaves. Um, now we. <clears throat> OK, so we had the Emancipation Rock Maze, 1863. Two years later, um, Juneteenth, you know, that's when we found out that, um, you know, most of the slaves found out that it was free, which this was around 1865. Now. Consider this here. We, at this particular time, we either homeless or we mm -hmm. vagrant, right? That means we, we're we wanderers, you know, we idle or whatever the case may be. In fact, I'm going to bring um, I'm gonna bring a um, uh, special guest in, okay. <laughs> our expert, um, <laughs> Black Law. <Lord. Right. laughs> I'm bring my uh, expert in to kind of share with us um, what that means when we talk about vagrant or vagrancy. And in Black Law's <clears throat> dictionary states uh, vagrant as one who not having a settled habitation. Um, in fact, I have it written right here. Scrolls from place to place, a homeless idle wanderer. The term often refers to one who spends time in idleness, lacking any property and without any visual uh, visible means of support. Now, this is what we was considered at this time, many of us. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you had some military, and if I'm not mistaken, I think you even had some, um, you know, uh, organizations like the Freeman Organization. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talked about that before. Um, but when you, even when you, I'm going to get to this part, but even when you think about that, right, you you have to keep in, in you have to remember, like, there was still two different mindsets. Mm -hmm. Um, you had some some uh, black folks during that time that had a little property. Yep. They had a different mindset and how they took, uh, you know, they had a sense of ownership, if you will. And then you had some majority of the black folks that didn't. Mm -hmm. They was unlearned. Um, they didn't know a whole lot. lot. They didn't have a whole lot. Um, so they became homeless and, and, and vagrant. And when you think about that, considering the definition of that, and you think about what was implemented, because see, now the Vagrancy Act of 1866 was passed. 
And on the Vagrancy Acts, uh, 1866, it stated that um, forced into, well, it stated that, let me make sure I read this right so we get the information correct. <laughs> the Vagrancy Act of 1866 passed by the General Assembly on January the 15th, 1866, forced into employment or a term of up to three months, any person who appeared to be unemployed mm. or homeless, <laughs> if so-called vagrants ran away and were recaptured, they would be forced to work for no compensation while wearing balls and chains. You remember that, brother? Mm -hmm. The chain gang. Chain gang, that's it. <laughs> Isn't that some? They implemented a law. Now, it clearly say vagrant. They kind of changed, you know, the wording behind that because they could have said any blacks because Black. they know who was out there exactly. wandering around. But they tried to make, they tried to say, well, it's not for the blacks. Uh, who else out there wandering around, um, mm -hmm. um, brother? <laughs> and see, because the, the thing about the, they, they understood the law meant you can't take away somebody's freedom except mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the case where they were convicted and they were a criminal. In fact, we, we're going to go to our expert one more time. So, so, they, let's, let's, so they made them criminals. Right. So let's go to our expert one more time. Because you just said something that was very powerful. The 13th Amendment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're we going to go to that. See, our, our expert right here, he's going to share with us what that actually means when we talk about this. So the 13th Amendment, which was passed in 1865, mm -hmm. right during the time that we was uh, supposedly set free. Yeah. Um, section 1. Neither... <clears throat> Neither slavery nor involuntary substitute, substitute, ah, servitude, except as punishment for a crime whereof the party should have been duly convicted, should exist without the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. So in here it's saying that there should not be any slavery or involuntary substitute except as a punishment for a crime like what you was just mentioned. Okay. And I'm going to let you continue on what you, was, what you were stating, but I just wanted to kind of share that so our audience kind of know where you're going at with this here because they start to implement different laws to keep us in servitude. <laughs> See, because now that means if, if I accuse you of Stealing from my farm mm. when you were really just working and it was supposed to be food. Right. But I can accuse you of stealing from that field. And now you can be arrested and convicted as a crime. You can be locked up and put in jail where now you got to work on the chain gang or you could be forced into servitude. And the thing was, now it, you had the U.S. Marshals, who were federal, who had been upholding the law, freeing slavery coming down from the top. But see, the U.S. Marshal was not in all cities and all mm. towns. Those were local, in most cases, sheriffs. Mm. And they followed a whole different rule. So if that sheriff convict you in a state, that federal law don't help you no more. Ain't that so? <laughs> so you on the chain gang now, right? Because um, and you were just eating corn, right? <laughs> or watermelon that you were picking in the field. Mm -hmm. Now, now you back where you was a year or so ago, mm -hmm. <laughs> two years ago. But now you got chains on you trying to work. <laughs> it's even yep. more tougher for you to do it, do your job. But that's it's it's a you know. So when we think about you know everything that we're, we're talking about. Like there was another one, um, and I'm gonna share this one as well. Um, they they termed this here peonage. Now peonage also was called debt slavery or debt servitude. Now this was a system set up that if you were to uh, ask, uh, you know, either slave owner or let's say you ask your 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 ex slave owner. Um, or you was to get a loan or something like that. Well, they will put you, you can go, I mean, they put you back in servitude until you pay that 
mm. and pay that up. Oh, I wouldn't worry <laughs> that one. Yeah, so that's that's what <laughs> pay, um, uh, peonage is. Um, it it was something that was enacted to kind of work off your debt. You want that land? Or you want that house? Right. You need someone to live, so you don't want to be vagrant. Right. This is what we're gonna do. <laughs> this is what we're gonna do. And I thought that I thought that be very unique because I didn't heard of the word peon before, mm. and it comes from that. The, That's the, where that comes from. It comes from that You're word. Peon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that means you don't have a lot, you know. So it's like you, you know, <clears throat> the support of your. You got a lack of resources. So mm-hmm. that was a word that um that and then that was was used back then. As a way for to keep slaves um, in in servitude, to, to pay off debts and things like that, if they was to receive um, certain um, uh, food. So you could be working for seven or ten years for something that you should have paid off in seven or eight weeks or right. months. Right, right, right. So <clears throat> now, when we talk about Juneteenth, we we coming from a history. Of what it started from. We're talking about, like I say, Emancipation Proclamation, uh, what what took on place, what went um, took place then. Um, we talked about the two years later and how we was emancipated or how we became conscious of this here. And now we're talking about the challenges that that we incurred, even being free, and the laws that was implemented that try to um, keep us in servitude. Um, but even coming up to date, when we think about Juneteenth. And that's what what we wanted to make this show about Juneteenth, mm-hmm. and how it needs to be recognized as a true day for us to, you know, acknowledge, you know, uh, other than the other day that we we really mm-hmm. acknowledge was, was what Fourth of July. Um, we need to really acknowledge this day because it was truly a day in history that we became um, knowledgeable or, or aware of us being truly free. In this country, and I ain't gonna say truly free, but to be for us to be uh, released. The, sh- the from, shackles, the shackles actually came off, right? So that we can kind of wander about like we did. Uh, so we want to recognize that. But I have learned throughout history because I think I came into um, the knowledge of Juneteenth um, when did we come together as MOP? But. 2016, 2015. Maybe five years ago, something like yeah. five or six years back. So about 2015. Maybe seven so that's or eight, about years. eight years. About eight years, yeah. okay. It's been I, a little longer than that. I came into the knowledge of Juneteenth. A lot of people didn't know about Juneteenth. But I was centered around a lot of brothers that, you know, with, with us in MOP, a lot of brothers with deep information, deep, you know, uh, contacts and things like that. That's why I'm always embracing uh, my brothers with with a lot of knowledge and, and wisdom and understanding. We all, you know, iron sharp and iron. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but coming into that and not knowing that was like a like a wild moment. <clears throat> yeah, you know. And I also also knew uh, did my research to find out that uh, in 1980 the state of Texas became the first state to make Juneteenth a ne- a state holiday. Mm. So. Texas was the first state to make it a state holiday, and that was around 1980. And then there are three more states followed after that, New York, Virginia, and Washington. And, of course, we know today it's a federal, it's a federal holiday. And it's I think rec- that was in 2021. Right, 2021. Um, Biden, um, he wrote that into as a national federal holiday, <clears throat> which I think that's by uh, the best thing he did in office, which I don't, I don't, I don't know exactly if they <laughs> did, but I think that was a great guess testament we'll give him, to him. We'll give him credit if he, somebody must have nudged him in the right direction. Right. <laughs> Pushed we'll, him in the right direction. We'll, we'll say that. And maybe he'd been around a lot of uh, universities and um, <laughs> that talked about, you know, black history and the importance of us, um, you know, recognizing our history. <clears throat> but um, o- oftentimes I say it's like, we're, rather than the, the, all, if they're not pushing for all they're doing is signing it. Somebody else sponsored it and put it there. That's true. They just put their John Hancock right. on it, as you may say. To get, to get recognition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I signed it into For law. somebody else's work. Right. <laughs> Ain't that something. <laughs> but even even considering that, you know, when we think about it, we, we have to believe that there it that others knew about it. Mm-hmm. What do you think were some of the reasons that maybe some of the other states at that time probably didn't 
didn't recognize it or institute it as as being one of those holidays. I think it's we're in a time now where it's, we with the we're becoming we're a lot more enlightened as a people, and with the advent of like not just social media, but the internet and the information era. Right. Now information is literally at your fingertips. And what used to take a long time to find it, like you say, if you had to wait for something by mail or you had to wait for a carrier, now information is there. And there's things on the books that people can say, okay, wait a minute. This has been, we, this happened. Why are we recognizing it? Right. And see, then it gets brought to the forefront and you have to now acknowledge it. Um, but I think it's it's more behind we we it's slowly happening, but we as a people are becoming conscious of our unity mm-hmm. and we're bringing it forward right. and we're pushing it. <clears throat> um, but it, it took that consciousness, like you're saying, it was if I had to think back to 2000 and say 10 or 2000. I was not aware. I, I know about the Emancipation Proclamation, mm-hmm. but Juneteenth was like, what? It, it wouldn't have mattered. Right. It wouldn't have made any sense. Right. But it's it's on the books and it's been there. But it's that's that's part of where the reality that some people miss the harshness of slavery. It's it's a systematic system of oppression. And that system of oppression is designed to keep the oppressed down. Until they push back hard enough to get those doors and gates to open, right. and we have to make and we have to make those changes. Otherwise, the system, unfortunately, is still working. Again. Yeah, we had the Emancipation Proclamation signed, but the system is still working against us mm-hmm. until we can begin to enforce it. Well said, my brother. Well said. <clears throat> So at this time, you know, we, we're at that point, like we said, it, it is a special program today. And then I will, brother, I, I want to leave you with, um, uh, I ain't going to say the last words, but I do want you to be able to, to share, like, anything that at this time that we want to share with the audience when it comes to Juneteenth, or freedom itself. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, it's, and I, I'll say this, this is something I'm, and I'm making it my own personal um, especially for those of us who are business owners, small business owners, and we're people of color, we black, we definitely need to be the, we need to be the first one to recognize the holidays, even though they're making it federal. It's like, we need to recognize it and then we need to keep it if we want it to, to become more part of the culture, to become more a reality. Um, it's like people, for example, you know, Christmas has been baked into the system. So it's so people automatically remember December 25th. Whether you celebrate Christmas right. or not, you're aware of the day mm-hmm. and it has an effect. We as a people, even if you're not a small, if you're a business owner, by all means, you should support it and push it. But even when you're working, if you're on a federal job, you need to definitely be making sure you're conscious of it. And even if you're not in a federal job where it's not being taken off, you need to be talking about it and making it aware because our freedom, it's like freedom is not something that's given to you. Freedom has to be earned. That's true. And we have to earn yeah. our freedom. There's still a lot of elements of slavery, the shackles that are holding us back. And the more we talk about it, the more we execute our freedom, like things like home ownership makes a difference. Mm. Like the prison system being mm. in prison it's like those are shackles, but we have to free ourselves from that. And part of it is the beginning to recognize it and actually practice it and keep it. All right, all right, my brother. <laughs> well, um, again, this was a special program. We pray that you're out there and you're enjoying yourself. Um, enjoy yourself today. Um, in fact, there, um, if you're here, in Orlando, um, they were doing something in Maitland. Um, actually, yesterday, uh, we, we were speaking on the, this, the 17th. Yes. This, this show is actually aired on the, the 18th. Uh, so we're hoping that you're enjoying yourself and that you enjoy this weekend. And make it known to family members. If you're, you know, you and I, uh, you know, our community, make it known to family members. Make it known to your children as well. Because yes. it's important 
um, that we know our history, and this is part of our history with it that we shouldn't forget. All right, so <clears throat> with that being said, um, today I'm just going to leave you with a quote. This quote comes from um, Nelson Mandela. They say, for to be free is not merely to cast off one's chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. And with that being said, this is Live Talk, and we're signing off. We'll see you next time. Peace and prosperity. And enjoy Juneteenth. <laughs> Indeed. Thank you again for tuning in to Live Talk. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Live Talk Orlando. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. You want to join the show? Email us at livetalkorl at gmail.com. You can also visit our website at www.livetalkorl.com. You can also follow the host on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Arthur Yeremiah. Make sure to visit the website Yeremiah Israel. Dot com and pick up your copy of the spiritual significance of a name.